Hey, this is Ed with AtticFoil.com. I'm out on a job site today with a contractor who's installing a concrete tile roof on this house. They're tearing off the old roof and installing this roof. What's great about this system is because it has an airspace underneath the tiles, because it's using a batten system, it's using one by two wood strips in order to, to mount the shingles onto, you're gonna have the required airspace so you can put a radiant barrier on top of the roof below this tile. Now this also works on a standing seam metal roof or a coated metal shingle roof. Any roofing system that has that airspace, you can put your radiant barrier on top of the roof. So from the top down, you're going to have tile, you're going to have an airspace, you're going to have foil, then you're going to have your waterproofing layer, and then your deck. This is by far the best system to keep out radiant heat. This attic is going to be super cool, and the customer is going to save a lot of money on their energy bills. If you're a roofing contractor and you install systems like tile or standing seam metal roofs, installing a radiant barrier is an easy way to increase the value to your customer. They're gonna have a lot of energy savings by repelling that radiant heat before it ever even gets in the structure. Plus, it's easy to install. All you're gonna do is roll the radiant barrier out on top of the waterproofing layer below the battens. So that way you have your required airspace between the tile and your radiant barrier attic foil. All right, I'm on the roof now, and I'm gonna explain exactly how a radiant barrier installed under a tile roof helps to improve comfort and efficiency. This tile concrete roof could easily reach 150 or 180 degrees on a hot sunny day. The decking or the, the membrane behind it can easily reach 120, 140 degrees because that heat is radiating across the space, it's being absorbed by the roof, and then ultimately it travels into the home. By installing attic foil radiant barrier on top of the membrane with this required airspace, the, the tile is still gonna get hot, it wants to radiate across that airspace but instead of being absorbed, we're reflecting over 97% of the radiant heat. The result is the membrane behind it is going to stay within a few degrees of ambient temperature. If you can drop that temperature, that reduces heat flow into the home. And if you can reduce heat coming into the home, that's what reducing energy is all about. Here's a couple more examples of installing attic full radiant barrier underneath a metal shingle roof. Notice it's got the wood battens which creates the required airspace so that you can have a radiant barrier. Here's another example of an existing roof. They put down the foil. I would encourage putting a waterproof layer first, and then they did the furring strips, and then a corrugated metal roof for a retrofit application. Remember, the airspace is the most important thing in order to have a radiant barrier. Radiant heat, by definition, is heat transfer across an airspace without contact. Basically, one hot object heating up another object without contact. Without that airspace, you cannot have radiant heat, by definition. If you don't have radiant heat, you can't have a radiant barrier. This is why you can't just put radiant barrier directly underneath typical three-tab shingles between, say, the roofing felt and the shingles. You must have that airspace. So if you're putting in a metal shingle roof or a standing metal seam or a tile roof or any system that has that airspace, please consider installing attic foil radiant barrier on top. It's a great investment. Your home will be more comfortable and more energy efficient.